Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on InRange TV. Today we are doing the second of our convoy dust tests. And today we're going to do it on an M4. Well, an well, M4-gery. Mostly an M4. This is a BCM upper in the M4 configuration, all standard GI parts. This is as close as we can get to a legitimate military M4. It's everything an M4 would be without a fire control group. I right, mean, it's a standard semi-auto. Exactly. Yeah. So if you haven't watched our AK-1, watch that one, because we did that one first, For and sure. this is the second of the series. And so the, the reason that we're setting this up this way is because we were looking at how do these things actually get used in the field? Um, and there's some controversy about our mud tests that, uh, sure. well, a gun would never go through that. Well, we saw some pictures from Afghanistan and Iraq of guys in convoys in open vehicles. There's one particular really cool video out there of a Norwegian, I think, I think a it Swedish was. Special yeah. Forces guy with a G3, and he's carrying his rifle in a, a vehicle with, well, he's right-handed, but with his thumb right over the ejection port of the G3. Because it doesn't have an ejection port cover. Right. Yeah. And he's all covered up in a shemag and goggles and covered in dust. And uh, we looked at that and we realized, you know what, we've got some roads out here in Arizona that do the exact same thing. Yep. So let's take a rifle, let's strap it to the roof of Carl's Kugelwagen, and let's run it out across moon dust horrible roads. Exactly. And uh, so I'll be driving in front and we're gonna just pile a whole bunch of road dust onto this rifle on the top of Carl's car. So the thought was you couldn't get a more legitimate version of a convoy dust test. I mean, exactly. we, could, we could put it out here and just cover it in sand, which is, you know, I frankly, I think valid. But, yes. but by putting on front of the car and actually driving through the moon dust and letting it settle into the gun as it would in that natural state, that really is a convoy environment. And we get to see some really cool footage of you covered in dust driving through it. Choking in filth, <laughs> yeah. So the other thing we want to talk about is the reality is that we're going to get a lot of questions about what about lubricant? Because there's right. dry lubricant, oils. What oil do you use? Do you lubricate it lightly? Or li the answer and, is? Well, in this sort of situation, any lubricant is a magnet for dust. Mm -hmm. So uh, between giving the guns the best chance of passing and having the best opportunity we have to standardize on everything, we're going to run the guns as dry as we can make them. In the interest of consistency, so what we have here is we've got uh, Birchwood Casey Gun Scrubber. It's really brake cleaner. Yep. What it does is the degreaser, and you just kind of pressure spray it down. And so what we're going to do is degrease every gun before we start. Yep. We're going to we're going to fire ten rounds to prove the gun works in its dry degrease state. Exactly. And then once we go through the convoy dirt, we're going to do another twenty rounds to see if it works or not. Yep. But what we're going to get video right now of you taking the gun apart. You're going to spray down the bolt carrier group and the inside and make sure there's no lubricant left in this AR, and then we'll do the 10 rounds of test fire. All right, let's get on it. All right, pull uh, the guts out of the upper here. We're gonna spray that down. We're gonna spray down the inside of this. Be careful to avoid the hand guards. So one other thing that people are gonna ask about is the dust cover. We're gonna run this test with the dust cover closed because that's how you would actually want to have the gun in this sort of environment. to pull the uh, bolt completely out. Good. Plenty of that in there. All right. This stuff evaporates off pretty quickly, leaving us with a nice dry M4. How's that look? You hand it to me, I was gonna show it up to the camera. So you can see, that uh, brake cleaner type substance really just takes all the grease off of the parts and we're going to run this essentially in this dry condition. See it's a well used bolt carrier group as you would see in probably many military conditions or situations. So put this back together in this unlubed dry state and we're going to drive through that well we're going to test fire for 10 rounds and then drive through that fill. Hey, you're messing a buffer detail. Yeah, weird how that happens. All right, let's get the test fire. All right, so we are using USGI aluminum 30 round magazines, green followers, anti tilt followers, because we're trying to duplicate the military loadout. Uh, along those lines, ammunition wise, we are using IMI mil spec M193, 55 grain high velocity stuff. Uh, 
All right, so 10 rounds just to show that this thing does actually work when it's completely dry. No problems. It's a uh, properly set up AR, so it's going to work just fine. And now we'll head over to our dusty road, strap it onto the car and see what happens. Ah, we'll be okay. Let's get the zip bag, the, the Ziploc baggie on the AR for the same reasons we said before. We don't want the dirt in the muzzle. Right. That's not a good idea. Yeah, we're not testing whether we can fill the, the barrel with sand and then explode it. We're testing whether the mechanism continues to work. There we go. Cool. That should right. keep dirt out of the actual bore. And let's go drive through our dusty conditions. I got to get suited up for my driving. Alrighty, let's take this thing off and see if it actually works. Got high expectations here. The AK worked, so if the AR doesn't, there will be uh, some explaining to do. Are you going to have a good angle on it left-handed? Yeah, it won't be a problem. So far, so good. Safety. No problems at all. I think that means we should probably do it again with the dust cover open. All right, let's go give it a whirl. More driving through that filth. Yep. Um, I will say at this point, these dust covers really do what they're supposed to. Um, this has definitely helped the rifle in the mud test. Certainly didn't hurt here. So let's see what happens when we don't have it. All right, it worked, which is a problem. We need to make it worse because I kind of thought it'd at least have a little bit of trouble maybe, but uh, we'll try it again with the dust cover left open. So we have a, round, uh, a magazine of 20 rounds in here, uh, none in the chamber again. We've retaped the muzzle and uh, take it a couple more miles through the dirt. Well, if anybody wants to say this isn't a legitimate dust test, I don't know what to uh, tell them. I think this really does replicate uh, convoy conditions. I mean, uh, uh, the dash, I mean, I can't even see out my windshield at this point. So <laughs> here we are back from the travels through the desert with the dust cover open. It's quite a bit of soot and dust and dirt on the bolt carrier right now. We are loading up another mag of 20 and we're going to find out what happens. Uh, I kind of think it's going to work. Um, I think both these guns are so resilient that it's sort of irrelevant. I think what we're seeing is something else, but we'll talk about that more later. All right, we have another mile or two of uh, dust convoy under this thing's belt, so take it off. You know, I kind of suspect this is still going to work. So, give it a try. So far, so good. Not a problem at all. Ran perfectly. Which is a little uh, 
unimpressive. Well, I mean, it's impressive that it runs. It's kind of unspectacular. The question now is, what would you have to do to actually make this thing stop working? And this partly is because it'll look cool to see it stop working, but it's also partly because there's a lot of anecdotal uh, account of M16s, M4s, ARs really jamming up badly in this sort of condition. So the question is, why would this one work and those didn't? Uh, there are a couple possible answers. I think one is magazines. Uh, we've been basically keeping our magazines pretty clean. They've been sealed in the action. Well, if you have a bunch of dirt in the magazine, that'll probably kill the gun pretty quickly. We've seen some of that sort of thing in the mud test. Once you get mud into the magazines, it's just all over. There's also a question of maintenance and what kind of condition the gun is in in general. And oftentimes, the stories that you hear where these things are failing are old military guns. And there's a decent chance, we have no way of knowing in retrospect, but there's a decent chance they haven't really been very well maintained. And they may be guns that are kind of teetering on the edge of working in the first place. And when you introduce some sand like this or some dust like this, that's enough to push them over the edge into failing. This gun is in excellent repair. It may look kind of gritty, but it's internally it works great. So in order to see if we can actually kill this thing, I'm thinking uh, we'll drop it down in the sand with a magazine and just kick a crap ton of dust onto it. That'll probably be enough to kill it, but maybe not. Let's find out. Which end is up? Well, dirt in the magazine, in the gun. I think that'll do it. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I'd shake it out. All right. So we saw Carl do this on the AK last time. We'll give it a little bit of a shake. Same thing with the magazine. Oh, I can already tell you that thing is not going to go into battery. The Blow it out time. a little bit. Now it might. Ready? All right, that is in battery. And you know what I have to point out? Didn't need the forward assist. Hmm. Maybe I did need the forward assist. Oh boy. All right, bolt is stuck closed, but did not fire. We may have had crap in the firing pin that prevented it from uh, dropping all the way. Go. All right, we got three rounds. So the bolt is sticking in the rearward position and all it's gonna need is a little tap. You look in there, you can see a ton of sand or dust on the back end of the receiver. That thing is pretty filthy inside. And I'm tasting grit from the dust. <clears throat> I have to say, I'm honestly really impressed by this. I, I was pretty sure it would work off of the car, but I figured kicking dust on it like that would have just killed it completely. And you know what, if, if we'd had a bunch of lubricant in the locking recesses, it probably would have killed it completely because I was able to blow it out because the gun was completely dry. If it hadn't been dry, it would have acted, the sand, the dust would have hit that oil, if there was oil, and would have turned it into oily mud, and then it would have just been all over. So the lesson here really is, if you're expecting to uh, be in an environment with a lot of very fine powdery sand or dust, keep the guns dry. Um, even an AR-15 like this will run dry. May not run as well or for as long as it will with some lubricant, but it's a lot better off dry covered in sand than lubed and covered in sand. I don't know what else there is to say about that. What do you think? Well, I think it's interesting to note that it was easier to mitigate and remediate the AK than the AR. I think you're on a dangerous uh, edge there where that AR is about ready to not work anymore. 
That may be the case. You got it yeah. going, but the AK felt like when I saw what you were doing there, the AK, once I cleared it, was running normally. Okay. And you got it to run, and then it failed, and then you got it to run, and then it failed. The AR definitely is more susceptible to this environment than the AK. I would agree with that. Um, still pretty impressive that it, it did as well as it did. So, well, if you guys like seeing this sort of thing, please do consider uh, supporting us on Patreon. InRange is an entirely viewer-funded channel, and we depend on you not just to support us financially, but also to share the content with your friends, anyone you think who would really enjoy it. Uh, being demonetized, of course, the algorithm search bots don't pay much attention to us. So share it with your friends. Thanks very much. And if you really want to be uh, a supporter of the channel, check out our cool t-shirt swag as well. Thanks for watching.